The other team, though, in this trade, Dave, the Thunder. And the thing I want to kind of take what we did with the Suns discussion, move it into a Thunders discussion, is they didn't just make this deal. They made this deal, plus they took Dennis Schroeder, sent him over to the L.A. Lakers, and acquired basically the 28th pick um, in the draft. So Bleacher Report put this out, and this is really mind-blowing. Here are all the Thunder picks from now until 2026. They have the 25 and the 28th this year, which they can either draft two guys or move up. 2021, they have their own. They have Miami's. And then they also have a pick swap with uh, Houston. So if Houston's worse than them, boom, we get to pick swap with you. In 2022, they now have theirs, Phoenix, and the Clippers picks. In 2023, their own Miami's and a Clipper swap. 2024, theirs, LA's, and Houston's picks. So three that year. 2025, just a pick swap. And then 2026, their own, the Clippers, and Houston. So except for what, one year, which is 2025, they have at least two or three picks in every single, like every First single round. one except one. First round picks. They still have a bunch of seconds too. It's yes. like, what? Yeah, this is a team that is just gearing up for give me all of the young talent. Or do they use these picks to try to trade for somebody? I heard I heard the trade in for, you know, <laughs> maybe an Amoni Bates and a Kane mm-hmm. Cunningham kind of deal. Like, mm-hmm. They're, they could go real hard and get two generational talents with a lot of future picks, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, I would be all in for that. I mean, I, look, I, I love the approach of taking enough swings. You'll you'll be bound to hit something eventually. But uh, if, oof, the top of the draft in the next couple of years, looking real good. Well, and, yeah. and we'll have a double draft eventually. I think 2023 yeah. uh, is when the NBA... Um, which got uh, the players deal is oh. no, the players deal uh, comes up again. And that's when mm-hmm. they can go for it. So, but that's again, they have, they have to deal with contract and negotiations yeah. to do that. And the info on that is, and this kind of goes into trades too, of uh, Jonathan Giovanni with uh, ESPN draft express yeah. said why the 2022 first round draft pick matters. This was in the CP three deal. One, there's a majority majority premium on 2021 picks as NBA teams are anticipating what appears to be an outstanding upcoming class. Number two, growing pessimism around the possibility of the age limit being eliminated in time for the 2022 draft. So that's why we're seeing like it's a little bit of I don't want to give up next year's pick because that's a really fucking good class or should yeah. be. But also the... Yeah, well, the age limit probably won't be up in 2022, so I can give you that pick rather than a 2021. Yeah, I think I think 2023 is when they're going to target for that uh, due to the contracts, but we'll see. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it like they've got a ton of a ton of ammo. Uh, I hope they don't just be the Celtics and you know sit on it all. Mm-hmm. Not, dude. Sam, Pre- has he ever sat on it all? Like that's the thing I'm thinking. Where went out and got CP3, now flipping them for this. And, like, for me, I'm even thinking this year of the Dennis Schroeder deal to get the 28th. If you're Sam Presti, Dave, are you making two picks? Are you trying to get future picks to get somebody to move in or get somebody like, because I know we're talking about later, the Clippers trying to move in. They're trying to move higher, though, than 25 or 28. Or are you trying to take both those picks and move up in the draft and take one guy? What are you doing if you're the Thunder? Uh, I'm probably trying to move up or move out. Like, well, you know what? They have all the options. So in in order, I would say move up. I think that if they can move up in this class and and land themselves like a staple kind of guy, then do it. Go, go for lotto, go land one of those guys. I mean, hell go get yourselves a Pokusevsky. Like why not? Why not take a shot? You got the ammo. Mm -hmm. If there's any team league who has the chance to develop a seven footer who has a shooting touch, and guard like handles, you know, go ahead and try to make KD 3.0. Like I know he's not and he'll never be, mm-hmm. but you can go ahead and try. Yeah. Um, outside of that, after that, I would say, hey, obviously they could, they could just take the picks and draft them because mm-hmm. look, they've got a young team, an incredibly young and talented team. And outside of Steven Adams, 
they really don't have vets on this team. So mm-hmm. they can give playing time to a lot of people. Like I expect this team to have like a legit 14 man deep, but all 14 are getting minutes kind of a deal. Like mm-hmm. Shea is clearly the center of this team. Uh, Baisley's number two. But after that, like, I think it's up for grabs. I think anybody can take a, their spot. And it's kind of like a, uh, you know, you work for it, you earn it, you get it kind of a minute steal for them going forward, which mm-hmm. excites the hell out of me. Yeah. Cause... And then I got trading out. Is, I'm not a fan of trading out because I don't think that like two late ones will get you a number one next year, like mm-hmm. a, like a, you know, pick 15 even. I don't know that it'll get you that. But could it get you, the, and I'll just say this because we're going to talk about the Clippers later. If it's like someone like a Lou Will, like that kind of vet, or you're not looking like there's a part in it that goes no because it's like you're not looking to add a vet like that. You're looking I don't know for what Lou Will does for me. Like he's a bad influence. Mm-hmm. You're looking for guys to develop, not a guy that either guys to develop or like mm-hmm. good veterans. No offense yeah. to Lou Will, but like they had Dennis Schroeder on the team. He was basically Lou Will, but mm-hmm. better. Like they just traded him away and got value back. I don't know why they would want Lou Will on this team because he mm-hmm. only took he'd only take away minutes from the young developing players. Like, yeah, either I'm getting like a great locker room presence, which Lou Will isn't, mm-hmm. or I'm just loading up with young talent. You yeah, know? I'm almost and letting them go out there and play. Because like two of the guys I'm looking at are basically the con- our Twitch chat um, says it right. Nick's Josh says he'd love for them to draft Jaden McDaniels. Um, Huge. Pick, I yeah. feel like that would like that's one that. It right depends on who who falls or not, but that works because he's got the length, got the athleticism. Right now with his shot, many things I've seen, it's more of like a catch-and-shoot kind of operator thing, but the shot is there, and right now they do need, sh- like, for McDaniels right now. ball handle, boy. Mm-hmm. I mean, he from what I've himself. seen, from what I've seen, it's basically the, he can create, but it's more of his decision-making right now Makes well, it they try to make him a point a... guard in college on a shitty team, and clearly that was not where he was yeah, at. Yeah, I'm just like, like they made him play out of position. Mm-hmm. He's a he's a tertiary ball handler. Mm-hmm. He's not the primary. He's not the guy you yeah. want. You know, he's not LeBron James out there, motherfuckers. Like mm-hmm. he's someone who you know, hey, our number one option. Like Shea gets doubled, pass the ball over to him. He can dribble the ball four times and you know slash in the lane and kick it. Mm-hmm. Like, but he's not out there fucking. Being a being being a shot caller on the floor, being a floor like general, that running not the his offense, job. yeah. Like yeah, he, he's a tertiary guy. Like I feel like I'm more so keeping the picks only for the one of the guys I would take, and there's going to be an abundance of them. I think late is I am getting one of those point guards. Like the guy that I really love is a Theo Maladon. Yo. Yes, yeah. Yeah. we are in sync. Theo Maladon, like he's a yes. combo guard who can shoot and pass and. Yeah, does he have things underrated. to develop? The more I've gone through mm-hmm. this draft class, the more I forgot about we, him. We had him so high in the lottery, like early on, and it just started to fall to where it's like he is somebody who right now can fit what they need, but also has a high ceiling to him. Yes. Like he's not just like a here's what I he is. I think he can come in and play, and he'll have a better – he could have a better rookie year than like a Killian Hayes who mm-hmm. – like we talk about being this uber potential like – D low, you know, wannabe lefty out there with mm-hmm. his smooth shot, but like, be careful now. So he really likes Killian Hayes. <laughs> everybody's got problems. I was joking on our Discord before the show, being mm-hmm. like, "Look, like you want to talk shit about like one prospect? All of them yeah. have holes. Killian Hayes mm-hmm. only has his left hand. He literally, like, you can <laughs> lop off his right hand. It doesn't matter because he yeah. doesn't use it. Mm-hmm. He can't go right." And of course, Sophie dropped. You know, he's just mini bar, mini Marvin Bagley. That's out there. right. He can't go. He can only go left. Um, and gonna, like, I love that. Uh, but yeah, everybody's got their own problems. Everybody's got shit mm-hmm. they got to overcome. And I really do like Theo Maladon's potential to be a, you know, and I I don't want to say a starting caliber, but a mm-hmm. role playing point guard in the league for a long time because I feel like he has a really complete game. So I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot you with a question here, hypothetical. Dark team. <laughs> it is Dort's team. Uh, I've been seeing that all over Twitter today. Um, yep. Hypothetical. 28th pick rolls around, Dave. Let's say earlier on the Thunder went with like a forward. Let's say like a Jalen Smith fell and they took a Jalen Smith. Sure. You're sitting there at 28 knowing you already took Jalen Smith. Theo is already off the board. He went to the Knicks. Let Hypothetical. Out of these three players, or are you outside looking at someone else for 28? Malachi Flynn, 
SD State. Mm-hmm. Grant Riller, which I think is he's from Charleston. Jaden McDaniels. Which one out of those three? Or is there like a somebody else where you're like, you know what? I rather try like an Isaiah Stewart or a Killian Tilly. Um, I know Killian Tilly threw in there, Dave, because I know you're high on him. I mean, look, Grant Riller is an intriguing player. But I don't know if he goes in the first round. That's the thing. I just don't think that Malachi Flynn, as good as he is, mm-hmm. I don't think there's a better high end potential guy than Jaden McDaniels that, that late in the first round. Like, mm-hmm. who who has the better top end if he fill if he plays out to like his best level mm-hmm. than him who's available late in the first? That's a problem. I'm like, yeah. who else has a raw body of work that could be that good at the NBA level? Like everybody who's left, maybe like. Uh, oh God, what was his name? Um, shit. School position. Uh, I'm scrolling through the draft. Jemias? Uh Cassius Winston. Was it Cassius Stanley? Uh, out of oh, Duke. Had, yeah, Cassius Stanley. They had somebody else at Duke who like literally couldn't shoot a basketball. Who was a wing? You're right, Stanley. Uh, he's one. Let me check the big board real quick. Yeah, it's Stanley. Um, Khalil Whitney was another one. Okay, Khalil yeah. Whitney. Um, he's someone who is a second round talent mm-hmm. who legit has like first round upside. If he learns to shoot the ball, like yeah. guys like that, where it's like, Oh man, if we can teach him like something that's obviously a core essential, mm-hmm. but like, he's got the body, he's got the athleticism, he's got everything you want, except for the ability to shoot a basketball mm-hmm. kind of necessary in basketball. Um, like guys like that who are, I could see like, Oh, I want to get him at like pick 28. Mm-hmm. So we get that extended contract on them while we work with them. I think Jaden McDaniels is the guy I would go with because of that reason. I think Emmanuel quickly would be another fun one. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been seeing I his know, name loves, a lot in the later first round. He's just, again, he's not a bad player was the problem. It was just mm-hmm. like, he was just a quiet player at uh, Kentucky. He did what he needed to do. <laughs> he could knock down shots. Ben, Ben's um, a fan of Emmanuel quickly. Ben loves quickly. Like, He's got decent size. He's got decent speed, decent shot. Like there's nothing that stands out about him. Like Grant Riller, like Mm -hmm. seems like the, the Reddit hype beast. Like, I swear to God, if I have to read like 18 more posts a day (laughs) about Grant Riller, I'm going to hate him myself. I I just don't, don't know how I feel about him. Cause there's a side to me. That's like, I want to love him, But then there's a side to me to where it's like, like Malachi Flynn's another one where you mentioned Malachi Flynn. I feel like there's only, there's only one team that will be able to unlock Malachi Flynn's potential. That's the Miami Heat. Oh. He just he just screams Miami Heat player to me. Like versatile shooter, can play in the pick and roll, smart team defender. Like I'm seeing all these things on the scouting report and I'm thinking, yep, screams Miami Heat. Put him with Jimmy Butler, Jimmy likes that guy. Like that's All what I'm guard, scrappy, you know. Exactly. We'll see. Maybe maybe a little Tyler Hero esque. No, I can't throw that out. Get out of here. Um, Not everybody's Tyler Hero. 